and welcome. My name is Mipolis, they, he, she, and today's pick is Ping Pong by Taiyu Matsumoto, originally published in five volumes between 1996 and 1997. I read the two-volume English edition published by Viz Media in 2020, translated by Michael Arias. I also happened to watch the anime, which initially ran in 2014. This is my second time trying to get through the duology. I initially tried to read the series in 2021, but didn't make it all the way through. Content notes for smoking, the angst of a child prodigy, and intense school sports. Keywords that came to mind were speed, sweat, intensity, competition, and line. The summary is, quote, Ace high school table tennis players push their passion to the limit in the story of self-discovery told by Eisner Award winner Taiyu Matsumoto. Makoto, smile, Tsukimoto, doesn't smile, even though he's got a natural talent for playing ping pong. As one of the best players in school, all hopes are on him to win the regional high school tournament. But winning is not what Smile really wants to do. Will the fierce competition to be number one bring out his best or drive him away from the game? Ping pong is Taiyu Matsumoto's masterwork reflection on friendship and self-discovery. Presented here in two volumes, featuring color art, the bonus story Tamura, and an afterword by the original Japanese series editor. Translated by Michael Arias, director of Tech on Concrete. Makoto smiles, Tsukimoto and his friend Yutaka Piko Hoshino have been playing table tennis since they were kids, but as they enter high school, they find that the game has changed. Seeing potential in them that they themselves don't fully realize, the coach recruits them for the school team. Bringing out their best will mean challenging the top players from rival schools in the summer tournament, including an ace Chinese exchange student who almost made the Olympic team. With the pressure on, can Smile and Pico take the heat and make it into the finals? Question mark? End quote. Written and illustrated by Taiyu Matsumoto, it has apparently been three years since I told you all that this dude is one of my favorite mangaka of all time. Links to my reviews of Gogo -Go Monster, Cats of the Louvre, and Sunny. I've also previously read and reviewed perhaps Matsumoto's most well-known work, Tech on Concrete, but apparently that was before the Great Channel reset, which means I get to read and review it again. But that'll be fun. Same for Blue Spring. And number five seems like the last translated yet to be read work at this point. Although there's always the hope of more to be translated. Writing wise, I will admit to initially being a bit surprised that Matsumoto had written a sports manga as it didn't seem to be totally in his wheelhouse based off of the rest of his work I had read up until that point. On the one hand, there's definitely very Matsumoto ways in which he approaches the sports manga. And on the other hand, apparently his editor kind of forced the idea onto him. Reading the essay in the back, by said editor Yasuki Hori was kind of weird. Dude could apparently not decide if it was okay that Tech on Concrete was good but not mainstream or not, and would apparently tell Matsumoto contradictory things in every conversation. Fun. Overall, it is a very character-driven story. There's some interesting meta moments, but with enough action that I still found it a bit hard to engage with on a plot level, although the action was really well done visually. Much more obviously, Matsumoto, the art really made the book for me. The intensity of the action, the line quality, the sweat, the dramatic page layouts. When Matsumoto pulled out the stops, it was all out. Let's just take a minute to really drink it in. Looking at the identities and representation, as we always do, similar to most of Matsumoto's translated work, Ping Pong is dominated by men. There's a few women and girls bouncing around, but it's all about the team and the competition, which are all gender segregated, apparently. Again, the focus on bettering oneself at sports and winning didn't leave much time for sexuality either, although the anime seemed to include more heterosexual dating. Race and nationality are a thing that come up fairly regularly in the fact that our protagonists are Japanese and one of the big contenders is Chinese. Can't really comment on the quality of the representation I know reading about Hikaru no Go, that there was some drama about the international competition at the end of the series. And I've been learning a lot this past year about the history of military aggression by Japan against Korea and China, etc. But I've still got a long way to go. And my light web search did not turn up any obvious answers. Class was much more glossed over than in some of Matsumoto's other work. In contrast, disability did come up a bit more than usual because when it comes to ping pong, these children are serious. 
They have workout regimes and follow nutritional guidance. Some kids get injured and others face limitations based on their physical abilities. It's not diving into it, but it's there, at least. Wrapping things up, while not a complete reproduction of the books, I did find the anime a lot easier to follow and engage with. It also felt like it complemented Matsumoto's style very well, so I would highly recommend, especially if you're having a hard time reading the book, like I did. Bye y'all, keep reading, and stand with striking workers. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, an Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.